Hi everyone and welcome along. Now the 1st of February saw the start of the Chinese New Year and this year is the Year of the Tiger so I thought that would be a perfect opportunity to do some simple tiger illustrations. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so in my book Birds, Bees and Blossoms I've got quite a detailed project of a tiger painting um, but today what I want to do is really simplify it back and almost almost go back to the earlier pages on it and we're just going to be looking at a really nice simple wash which will be a lovely tiger that you can just paint over and over again so I'm going to do three different poses today um, we do need a pencil but we're just going to draw in the bare minimum so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one up here down there one there um, and to start off with uh, we're going to do a tiger sort of sat um, with his back to us because the thing is is I think a lot of people get a little bit overwhelmed with the limbs and heads and faces and tails and actually if we just start with the really simple shape so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw an oval quite a sort of squat oval and then I'm going to overlap it as if we were drawing maybe a, a, a sort of tall slim snowman and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that sort of goes up which is going to be the spine which is going to help me now flesh this out and start to put in a bit of a a bit of a head, a bit of a face going to have an ear that comes off that line, an ear there, we've got our nose, and then we can just sort of flesh it out a little bit, and then we can have a tail like this. Now it doesn't really look very tiger-like at the moment, but I promise you, as soon as we start to add in a bit of colour, then we can start to really get the tiger very clearly on there. So um, we need some cadmium orange, but also cadmium red is a really fantastic addition to getting the tiger really beautifully glowing. So I'm just gonna wake up those colors and I also need to just lightly rub out this pencil and then we can get going. So you can see I'm really just rubbing out the pencil so that it's just the, the bare minimum there. And I've got a size four brush, which seems like a really nice, uh, sort of a nice go between, between having enough um, of a large brush to do nice loose brush strokes, but also small enough with a nice fine point that we've got a nice amount of control. So I've just mixed some cadmium orange, cadmium red together to get a really nice, um, beautiful colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint with a nice wet colour down the side. And what I can do now is I can just sort of slightly angle the shapes a bit more, give it a little bit more detail. And I want to make sure that I keep the edges nice and colourful. But then I clean my brush off and come into the middle. So you can see I'm sort of moving a little bit away from my pencil shape but that's what the pencil is for is just to sort of be a nice guide for us and then flatten it off at the base and then I'm just going to paint in a rather sort of long tail Let's round that off. And 
and then up over the top what I want to do is colour in around that ear and come down we're just going to leave that little bit of white under the chin so just allow it to have a little bit more of a of a tigery a tigery face and uh, we'll give a little bit of a little bit of orange to those ears Okay, so what's happening now is the paint is drying slowly, but it has still got quite a lot of wetness there. And uh, we need to add our tiger stripes, of course. Now, what I think is the, the best result here is if your paint is not 100% dry, if there's just the tiniest bit of damp there that allows the paint to feather the tiniest bit however that does take a little bit of time so just keep an eye on your page after a while the the shine of the water when it hits the light on the page will have disappeared um, but there will still be quite a lot of dampness there so I'm just mixing up a mixture of Mars black and just a little bit of Payne's grey because I just like to I like to always have a little bit of other colour in with the black so I'm just going to give this um, another minute to dry and then we can pop the stripes on I've let that dry for about a minute uh, but I want to I want to have you here uh, to see if I if I get it right or wrong just because I think everybody would would appreciate seeing whether the mistakes are made or not so that is kind of perfect you can see there's a little bit of feathering but ultimately the the shape has kept its integrity it's not feathering out too far so I'm just using my size 2 brush and I'm just putting in very simple black lines here um, but down the spine this is where it gets quite interesting. So that pencil line we drew is going to be really helpful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in my stripes. Oh, that's lovely. So what I want is that just that slight sense of the furriness with that feathering. So it's going to sort of come up to the middle. And each brush stroke is just done with just a one. And then on the other side, just as long as you're sort of making the meat in the middle there on the spine, it doesn't matter if they're not completely symmetrical. Um, I'm also just giving them a little bit of a, just a tiny gap. And then I will just add in a few and the paint is, has dried really beautifully um, now as we get up towards the face I'm going to use one of my four tenths brushes and I've got the black again and what I want to do is just give this Just a little bit of detail. And then I like to do a few whiskers. And there we go, that's our first tiger and I think that's a really good simple one to start with. Um, so we we'll just let that dry and we'll start drawing the next one. So now we're going to try one that's a little bit similar to the tiger in my book, the detailed tiger in my book in terms of the pose. So I start 
again with ovals. So this is the torso, and then we're gonna link to the back with a slightly smaller, but not a huge amount in it, other oval, and I'm just gonna join the two like that. And then from those ovals, I'm going to draw in some legs. So we're just, we are keeping it fairly simple. So I'm just gonna have, so the chest comes up like that, the leg, and then we'll have the back leg coming forward and a, and a, a leg in the background going backwards. But you can see I use the oval to sort of shape those legs there. The ginormous paws and then let's have a tail. And then up here we're going to have it coming up into a head shape. I like to do a sort of, it's almost like a one, two, three, four, like a pentagon shape, the head. And we give some little ears. Quite a broad, broad kind of nose. Some eyes and the, the nose then joined by a, a little upside down Y. And that's all we're gonna really have for the drawing. And then we're gonna start painting it in. And like this one, suddenly it starts to come alive. So here's my rubber again lightly rubbing out everything I've drawn because also I want to slightly deviate from my drawing okay let's go so got my orange again mixed up with the red and this time I want to get those legs drawn in, so we'll get there. We go. I think I'm going to change my water. I want this orange a bit more vibrant, and I think using the the black for the stripes, there we go, that's a bit better. So again, I'm just I'm marking in the sort of outer edges of the shapes. And even though it's loose and all fairly wet, what happens is it gradually gradually dries it means that if, whenever you paint in a new thing like the back leg or the that middle section of the the torso of the tummy there will be just a slight dividing line between the two which I'll show you what I mean in a second I'll just get this bit of tiger in so we've got a nice white chest there Okay, so let's see. So we just get a slight sense of the difference. And then with the back leg there, I'm just going to paint in sort of the outer edges. I'm not gonna show that there's a bit of white on the inside of the legs. Remember, these are sort of simplified, slightly sort of, you know, cartoonish tigers. So we're not looking for anatomical correctness however we do want to get some sense of it actually being a little bit accurate and then for the head I think start with the nose 
I'd like to leave a little bit of white around the eyes. And obviously a little bit of white around the mouth. Okay, that's a good amount of orange and then we just need to let that dry just a little bit and then we can add in our, our black. Now the only other thing is you might want to consider having the tiniest bit of shadowy mix, very very dilute and faint, just to give you that little tummy there. Okay, I'm gonna see how I go and brave it with the stripes. I think we've given this a, a very nice amount of time to dry actually. It sort of looks like there might not even be any feathering, so I may have left it a little bit long, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, so I want to put the stripes sort of coming in and over the chest. I always think of the stripes as kind of wrapping wrapping up the tiger. And even though this is a very simple sort of cartoonish drawing, things like making sure you think about how the stripes cover the roundness of the body makes all the difference. dabs on the front feet and now I'm going to take my smaller brush as I move over to the face because it feels like it needs a little bit more of a, a deft touch so stripes on the face I'm really using the thin to thick to thin here For the nose, I'm just going to sort of use the black there, two kind of brush strokes just to join in the middle, and then a bit of a bit of a grumpy <laughs> a grumpy mouth. And then the eyes get some lines just going down the side there. Coming up over the top. Notice how even though I'm using my small brush, I'm not sort of using it very, um, um, I'm not using the finest tip, I'm still sort of squishing it all down. So I'm just creating these eyes by just sort of dabbing in the colour there. I'm just building up the shape until I'm happy with the happy with the design. And then just that little bit of shadow under the chin there. And then maybe a few whiskers. I 
and I think we've got a rather sort of he's rather cuddly I mean don't be fooled I'm sure he don't he wouldn't want to cuddle from you um, but a rather lovely tiger so I've got one more pose for you so we'll just let that dry and I will get started this last one I think is my favorite because this is sort of how I feel like I've always seen tigers if I've ever been and seen them in a safari park or a, or a zoo um, so we're going to have a lounging tiger and what I want to do is really get the sense of the the sort of hip and the lounging shape so we're going to have a, an oval that is then have a another one here and up comes the head so we've got little elbow and then those legs and then the tail lying off there the head well it comes up there and we've got the ears maybe the ears a little bit more up like that yeah legs off there okay let's rub that out and then we'll get painting okay I've got my size 4 brush mixing up a little bit more tiger color once again and here we go so we're just creating that outline And then using water to draw in towards the middle of the body. The other thing that um, you probably be interested to know is is some of these tigers actually feature in my book Birds, Bees and Blossoms. You may not have noticed but in the last chapter we have a whole section on how to make patterns and I do a repeated tile pattern and it just happens to be some simple tigers. Um, and in the book we don't actually go into much detail because I've got the, the detailed tiger project in the front of the book but these are the tigers that I painted for the tiled repeated pattern at the back so if you've got birds bees and blossoms go and have a look and if you wanted to learn how to paint those simple tigers well you are looking at it okay so up we come to the head and uh, just being careful to only give a little bit of the, the colour because we want a little bit of white. I just love this one because it feels like there's a lot of character. There's a story behind this tiger sort of lounging, looking away from us, wondering what he's thinking out. Um, so yeah, once again, we need this to dry just a little bit. We could put in a very small amount of shadow, just sort of, actually no, I think we'll be all right because we're gonna put the stripes in. No, nah, I think we're good. Let's let it dry just a little and paint in those stripes one last time. So I can see that this one is just ever so slightly, slightly damp, which I'm hoping will give us a gentle blend in some places. But essentially what we need to do, yeah, look at that, that's, oh, that's lovely. But it might be a bit much. You've got to be careful with these things. You can't sort of go in too far because then it's hard to, it's hard to retrieve it, but let's see. Oh, that's nice. So I'm making the central line, that spine, remember from the first one. Extremely useful. 
I mean, I think I'm, I'm playing a slightly dangerous game with how wet some of the paint is. But the other thing that's probably worth mentioning is, of course, when paint watercolour paint is wet and blends like this, it dries quite a lot lighter. So it means you could go back in afterwards and paint a little bit more on, which is maybe what we'll do. But I quite like that. <laughs> Probably not all that helpful that I'm going, yeah, do this, don't do that. And then I'm like, oh, but it looks quite cool. But that's the way I teach, really. I really am keen for you to make your own discoveries with watercolour painting. I don't want there to be a one rule fits all because I think there's something really cool about how the, the paint feathers out a bit. Okay, let's get a little bit closer up. We've got a little arm, a little leg. I think one thing you can't um, afford to have too wet though is the head. So I am going to just give this a second more drying time and then we will finish it off. Okay, so we've allowed it to dry a bit more, so it's probably a good time to show you that you could just always go back over anything that you wanted a bit more definition on. And there's something quite cool about how that suddenly gives you actually two layers of stripes, which is rather nice in my opinion. Anyway, let's get to the head. So we need um, some little stripes. So what I'm going to do is take that sort of nose and then just using the black quite sort of roughly. It just gives us the, the contours of the face just by a few black brush strokes and then a few whiskers just to Okay. We'll just take a, a tiny bit of shadow there. And there we have three simple loose watercolour tigers for you to paint and enjoy. And uh, yeah, a very happy Chinese New Year. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell just next to it. Okay, until next time, bye.